Hello everyone! In this lesson, we are going to talk about systems of linear equations. So basically, a linear equation in n variables is an equation of the fun which is given by this. And you can see that um, the powers of each variable, like this, this, and that one, is just 1. And this means the equation will eventually give you some sort of equation of a flat thing like for example and for example lines and planes and hyperplanes and so on and we call um, a1 a2 and a n to be coefficient and this b to be a constant and these numbers can either be real or complex numbers Okay, so there are a couple of examples and non-examples about linear equation. So basically, for the first one, you can see that all the powers of x sub something are just 1. And we can certainly rearrange this as to be um, 3x1 plus 6x2 plus 9 equals to 0. And also for the second one, again, all the powers of the variables are just 1. And if you arrange this, we get pi x1 minus 1 plus square root of 2 plus square root of 6 x2 plus x3 equals to 0, which is, which is exactly the same form as the given definition above. Now, let's look at non-examples. So the first one, so this one is not a linear equation because of x2 times x3. So we cannot multiply variables. And for the second one, we cannot have variables in the denominator. And also, square root means x sub 2 to the 1 over 2. So we cannot have variables in square root. Okay, so there are a couple of more definitions. Um, a system of linear equation means that it's a collection of several linear equations. And the solution of the system is just the least that satisfies the given equations. Okay, so let's analyze what linear equations represent. So basically, linear equations gives you the flat thing. So in two-dimensional space, let's think about, for example, x1 plus x2 equals to 3. Then if you draw the graph of this equation, then we can tell that, well, this is the equation of the line. So, two-dimensional linear equation gives you a line, which is flat, and it's a one-dimensional object. Okay, and for 3D, um, consider the equation given by x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 equals to, say, 4. Then we know from calculus 3 that this is the equation of the plane. So if you draw in 3D space, then we get, then we get a plane which is um, two-dimensional object. Okay? So if you extend this to n number of variables, say like x1 plus 2x2 plus and so on till x n times x sub n equals to 5, then this will give you, well, m minus 1 dimensional object and we call this as a hyperplane okay then we can also ask what what is the graphical representation of the solution set of the given equations so basically suppose that you have say um, x2 equals to 2x1 and x1 plus x2 equals to 0 so here solution set means the set of points that satisfies these two equations simultaneously and that is certainly equivalent to half so let's draw the graph of this one so the first one corresponds to this and the other one corresponds to this so geometrically the place where um the place that satisfies number one and number two simultaneously 
is exactly this point. In geometry, the solution set is the intersection of the hyperplanes. So there are several types of solution sets you can see. So let's pause the video and try out, try to find out the solution set of these three problems. Okay, so let's solve these things together. For, so for the first one, if I set this to be number one and this to be number two, then if you multiply by two for the first equation and subtract this from equation number two, then we get 2x1 minus 6x2 equals to negative 6. 2x1 plus x2 equals to 8. And if you calculate this, we get negative 7x2 equals to negative 14 or x2 equals to 2. And if you plug this back into the second equation, we get 2x1 plus 2 equals to 8 or 2x1 equals to 6 we get x1 equals to 3. So if you graph these two equations, x1 plus 3 equals to 3 times x2, or x2 equals to 1 over 3, x1 plus 1. And for the second one, if you move 2x1 to the right-hand side, that gives you x2 equals to 8 minus 2x1. So we can plot the graph by this one. So the intersection point corresponds to our solution set, which is 3, 2. Okay, so for part B, um, if you divide by 3 on the second equation, that gives you x1 equals to 20 over 3 minus 4x2. If you plug this into the first equation, that gives you 20 over 3 minus 4x2 plus 4x2 equals to 9, or we got 20 over 3 equals to 9. So in this case, this thing certainly is not true, so we have no solutions. Okay? And geometrically, if you plot these two graphs, we can see that these two graphs are parallel each other. And there's no intersection point of these two lines. Okay, so for the last one, if you divide by 2 for the both sides on um, equation number 2, we get 3 minus 2 times x2 minus 5x1 equals to 0, or 3 equals to 2x2 plus 5x1. And if you plug this into there, we get 3 equals to 3, which means infinite solution. And if you plot the equation, well, we have 2x2 equals to 3 minus 5x1, or x2 equals to negative 5 over 2, x1 plus 3 half. So basically, well, let's label the first one as the green one and the second one as the blue one. And the graph of these two lines are essentially the same thing. And that's why we get the infinite solutions. So that example tells us that a system of linear equation has either no solutions or exactly one solution or so infinitely many solutions. And for the first case, well, the system is inconsistent because there is no solution. And the other two cases are consistent because we can find a solution. Okay, um, we can write the system of equation as a matrix notation. So basically, if you collect all the coefficients of the system of the equation, we get the coefficient matrix. So the matrix is the box or the list of all the numbers where we can put numbers into each entries. And the matrix that also consider constant is called as the augmented matrix. So in this case, we can put coefficients first, like 1, negative 2, 1, and the constant goes to the last column. So it should be 0, 2, negative 8, 8 and 5, 0, negative 5, and 10. So basically, if you look at the coefficient matrix, it has three rows and three columns. So we call this coefficient matrix as 3 by 
three matrix. And for the augmented matrix, we have again three rows, but we have four columns. So we say three by four matrix. So, so the number of rows comes first and the number of column goes next. So in other words, the size of the matrix tells us how many rows and columns it has. And an n by n matrix, we read this as n by n, has m rows and n columns. Okay, so we're going to practice to solve the linear equation, the system of linear equations by using the matrices. So let's look at this exercise. So basically, we can write the given system of equation as an aug augmented matrix. So the coefficients are 1, 3, and negative 1, and the constant is 6. And for the second one, it is 4, 0, 1, and 2, and 0, 2, 5, and negative 8. So basically, we're going to solve the system of equations, but we will keep track of how the augmented matrix changes. So first thing first, let's eliminate x1 from the second and the third equations. So basically, what we can do is we multiply by negative 4 to the first equation and add this to the second equation. And then we will replace this to the second one. So what, what it means is we get, if you multiply by negative 4 to the first equation, we get negative 4 x1 minus negative 12 x2 plus 4x3 equals to negative 24. And the second equation was 4x1 plus x3 equals to 2. And if you add them together, this gives you 0 minus 12x2 plus 5x3 equals to negative 22. So we get a new system that is given by x1 plus 3x2 minus x3 equals to 6 and negative 12x2 plus 5x3 equals negative 22 and the, and the last equation is 2x2 plus 5x3 equals to negative 8 and this corresponds to 1 3 negative 1 6 0 negative 12 5 negative 22 0 2 5 negative 8 Okay, now let's pause the video and finish off this calculation and find out the solution set for the system of equations. Okay, so if you eliminate x2 and do all the calculations, you will get x1 equals to 1 and x2 equals to 1, x3 equals to negative 2. So if you plug in this solution set into the given system of equation, we can verify the solutions. So we get 1 plus 3 times 1 minus negative 2 equals to 6, which is OK. And for the second equation, well, we have 4 times 1 plus negative 2 equals to, I guess this is 2, which is OK as well. And if you plug this to the third one, and that gives you 2 times 1 plus 5 times negative 2 which is 2 minus 10, which is negative 8, so that we can verify the solutions. For 3 by 3 system, well, how does the solutions look like? The above example gives us a solution set of point. So certainly point is there. And if all three equations are the same, like for example, like if you have like, say, 2x2 plus x3 equals to 2, and like 8x1 plus 4x2 plus 2x3 equals to 4. Like 12x1 plus 6x2 plus 3x3 equals to 6. Then basically, these three equations are essentially the same. So this will just give you the equation of the plane. Something like this. Or the solution set looks like the plane. So in the same argument, if two of them are essentially the same, and then we get 
a solution set like a line. And if the system is inconsistent, then there's no solution. So there are four different kind of solution sets for 3x3 three three system. So the operations that we did to solve the system of linear equations is called as the elementary row equations. And this consists of the replacement, like you replace one row by adding or subtracting like other rows, something like that. And you can also interchange two different rows and we scale and we scale or multiply some numbers into equations to solve to get the solution set. So basically these three things are called as the um, elementary row operations and it's frequently abbreviated by ERO. And because this is the um, procedure to get the solution set, elementary row operations does not change your solutions. So which means that if augmented system of two linear systems are row equivalent, which means you got one by taking ERO to the other one, then the system have the same solution set. So here, row equivalent means that you get one to the other by the series of taking ERO operations. So, well, we can certainly ask whether the system is consistent or does the solution exist? Or if the solution exists, we can ask whether the solution is unique. So the following matrices are representing a um, systems of equations, which means they are augmented matrix. So let's pause the video and try to find whether the given systems are consistent. And if it is, determine whether the solution is unique. Okay, so let's begin with part A. So it is always easier to work with the rows with the most zeros. So in this case, it's the last row or the third row. So this row tells us that 3 times x3 equals to 0. That gives you x3 equals to 0. And second row gives us 4x2 plus 8x3 equals to negative 5. But we have x3 equals to 0, which means we have 4x2 equals to negative 5. Or x2 equals to negative 5 over 4. And the first row gives us x1 plus 3x2 plus 2x3 equals to 7 or x1 plus 3 negative 5 fourth plus 2 times 0 equals to 7 that gives you x1 equals to 7 plus 15 over 4 which is the same as 28 plus 15 over 4 and this is 43 over 4. Here we have x3 equals to 0 x2 equals to negative 5 fourth, and x1 equals to 43 over 4. So you can tell that the solution exists and unique. Okay, so for part B, again we start from the last, last row that gives you 0 equals to 3. But this is impossible. That means that the solution does not exist. Okay, so this is the last example for this section, and we will discuss more about row operations in next section.